thanks for thanks for coming here. Uh, this started probably about five years ago, I think it was. And I got a CD of a, a guy, Ray Cooter, you might know, and he wrote a CD called Chavez Ravine. Chavez Ravine was a, loca a Latino community in Los Angeles, and it was bulldozed out of the way to make way for a baseball stadium. And Ray Cooter wrote songs and had stories and stuff about when that was, community was alive and well, they had their own culture, their own music, their own everything. So I said, I'm going to do that about the fountain. Because the fountain that I remember isn't there anymore. You know, that, that I remember when I was uh, growing up, we moved up to Northland, but the, the fountain in the city centre was still the centre of our <coughs> social life, as that, that's the way we put it. Uh, we'd be sent out to George Ferguson's to get her hair cut, and go to the youth club and the diamonds, and Fergie Street, all that stuff. So I was trying to remember the way that it was when it was alive and well. So I uh, wrote a bunch of songs and became this CD, I think, about four years ago. So all the same to me now. And uh, <coughs> recently, probably Michael Nangle got the idea to expand the CD into a musical. That meant I had to write some more songs and include a love story and uh, embellish on the on the song that I had. And I'm trying to tell that story of what happened to people in the mountain artistically. It's not uh, a cold history. You know, it's the, it's the emotional side of, like, of what happened. And it's also a celebration. There's rock and roll in it, and there's dancing. And uh, it's trying to deal with the themes of uh, redevelopment the big thing away people and displaced people. The troubles obviously affected the community very badly. The un unemployment was another theme, emigration. And uh, so on in the whole piece we're trying to deal with those kind of themes, bring about telling the story. And you have you have a wee hand out there so I think we'll just get at it. And do the, the first scene. And uh, the first scene this will be the opening of uh, basically what will be the hit musical. <laughs> and, uh, it's it's uh, the theme of, of redevelopment and uh, somebody who had moved away coming back and trying to get in touch with their, their roots again. So, here we go. Took a walk up Wapping Lane Just to see what I could see Nothing looked the same Nothing like it used to be I always come back here My mother's childhood place Generations born and bred Sacred time and sacred space But that was long ago Before the planners came Bulldozed homes and lives Never be, never be the same again Okay, son, you look a bit lost. I well, I'm trying to figure out where Fountain Street was. You're not from here then? Uh, well, my mother was. I, I, I was born in Bishop Street. Grew up here, but I've been in Canada a long time now. Ah, 
you look a bit familiar. Mm. I thought you were a Yankee with your dress. <laughs> Still got his dairy accent though. Never lost that. Uh, uh, being a Canadian is different from being a Yank. Canadians don't like to be called Yanks. Why? That's, well, two, that's two different countries. Do you mm. know anything? Should they both belong to us? What's it like out there in the colonies? <laughs> well, in Canada, we like to say it's 10 months of winter and two months of bad skiing. 10 months, 10 months yeah. of winter. Yeah. That's too cold for me. What's your name? Hamilton, Robbie Hamilton. And what Hamilton are you? My father was from Ivy Terrace. No, I don't know them. You look a bit familiar though. Were you always so handsome? <laughs> <laughs> Can I stop it? You're showing me up. So you're looking to know where Fountain Street was. Uh. Well, if you go up those new steps there. Do you mind the old steps at the top of Wapping Lane? The one with the wee handrails? I do. I used to slide down that wee rail as a boy. Well, it's not them. Oh. <laughs> but if you go up those new steps and... Walk through the school wall. Kitty, shush! Walk through the school wall. How can he walk through the school wall? I'll continue. If you could walk through the school wall, go right and you'd be right outside Ferguson's barber shop. Except it's not there anymore. <laughs> The backyards of the houses on the other side just to back onto the dairy walls. Kitty, stop it. You're embarrassing him. Are you all right now, son? Do you know where you are? Ah, uh, well... Uh, we're going down to the coffee shop in the corner of Artillery and Fergie, as you Yanks would say, for a cappuccino. Canadian. Used to be Baptisties, but it's full of young ones. Tourists, Yanks and arty farty ones from the playhouse now. <laughs> and that's where, if you get stuck, that's where we'll be, all right? Here he does look well familiar. Aye. I think he was in the flute band, and I remember him coming to the Mem. Sure, everybody danced in the Mem in Aye, those days. hundreds from all over the town. Here, how would you remember him unless you and him were, uh... Well, Kitty, wasn't the first one to buy me a wee mineral in the balcony. Aye, dead on. Come on, Marty, I get my prescription. The streets. All the streets. Fountain, Kennedy, George's, Henry. Victoria, Albert, Hawkins, Hawkins, Aubrey, We Albert, Major's Row, Hampson's Close, Clarence Place, Kennedy Place, and Fountain Place, 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 Place. Streets of yesterday. All vanished, gone away. Who was it told them die? Who said it was okay? Took a walk up Wapping Lane just to see what I could see. Nothing seemed the same. Nothing like it used to be. Nothing like it used to be Nothing like it used to be Second scene we're going to do takes place in what used to be Baptiste's Cafe of Java, that would you call it? So that's, that's where they used to meet up again. And this time they're sort of they're looking at why do people come back and also one of the effects of the trouble. It was the people I missed when I went away. The streets, aye, but it was the people. So why did you go to Canada, Robbie? Oh, it, it was a lot of things. They were knocking down the houses in the fountain. People were moving to the waterside. Riots every night. And then there was, we Sam got shot. Aye. I only danced with him the one night. He was so shy. He was lovely. Didn't see him after that. I went to England for work. What was he like? What happened that day? What was he like? 
The ones who loved him called him we sang. Had a smile so sweet. They all knew him on the street. Loved to go out of an evening. Those dancing feet, they all knew him on the street. Off to work in the early morning. There's mouths to feed, cut the shirts, gotta earn the wages. He'll rain or sleet. They all knew him on the street. They all knew him on the street. They all knew him on the street. Factory girls all smile and tease. Time and motion, boss to please. Cut those patterns nice and neat They all knew him on the street Walking home the days were over There's friends to meet But there's someone waiting on the street Strangers waiting on the street Danger waiting on the street At the play park near his doorstep It's guns that speak And he falls down on the street can bullets fly, there was no mercy. Knock him off his feet, and his blood spills on the street. And his blood spills on the street. And his blood spills on the street. thousand people all watch and weep as he is carried down the street the last farewell the final journey maker to meet they all knew him on the street they all knew him on the street. They all knew him on the street. The ones who loved him called him We Sam. Ah, oh, dear God. Those were terrible days. So that's why I left. I bet it's, but it's better now. Why the hell did you come back? So many memories, so many deaths, everything changed. Why come back? Still not sure it was the right thing to do. There was something, something calling me.
a minute, let me suggest to you that you just turn to the person beside you and chat a wee bit about what you've seen, how it, how it affected you, what way it was for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Rather than inviting people into a big group straight away. So just turn to whoever's beside you, Jeanette, and just have a wee chat. And let's hear a yeah, you to chat amongst yourself, as it were. Then we'll come back into the big group. Thank you so much. One of the things that's clear is that you like this. And that's something that Roy Arbuckle, in his heart and soul, wanted to know. Um, so, <laughs> so, so what, I, what we're inviting you to do is just give us a bit of feedback on what you saw. The way this was built was the fountain a musical question mark. Is this a thing to proceed with? Uh, what, what's been your reaction? I know that I have been very moved and, and tearful. So if I wasn't in this role and I was sitting where you're sitting, Jeanette, I might just cry. Um, so, uh, and also joy as well, because the first scene has got a great deal of humor in it. So what's your feedback? What, what, what way did this work for you? So, What's your thoughts? What's your feelings? What were you saying to the person beside you? Anything you want to share? Um, and hello there. Go and say your name. Kate, how you doing? Welcome. You'd be a Craigan woman, I think. From Dunree Gardens. Ah. And the people of Craigan. Yeah, and do you want to say any more, Kit? No. no. Well, you're very welcome. I don't think I've seen you here before. Yes, I was here last week. Kit, I wasn't here last week. <laughs> so, uh, so it's good, you say it's good to remind it that people of the fountain suffered as well as the people of the bogs, hey, the people of Craigan. Anyone want to say some? Yeah. 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 Is the man just here? Yeah. Give me the mic. Yeah, the mic's coming on. No, we're just going to not bother. <laughs> <laughs> so, give us your name. Uh, actually, I, I'm related to Michael here, um, but I'm coming in blind. I don't know anything about this. Yeah. And uh, I just, first of all, uh, I'm a photojournalist. You and Martin I'm, Engel? Yes, yeah. and I'm former war photographer in the Baltics and the Middle East. And what I wanted to ask was, I look at this play, uh, first couple of scenes, and I see a crossover, you know, between the genres of tragedy and comedy. And I, I wanted to ask, uh, will that work? Because you know, I've dealt with tragedy and through my job, and I've also, you know, been in, in, in situations where comedy is a is a major uh, uh, delivery. And I, I wanted to ask. Um, is this a play about tragedy or is it a play about comedy? Because what we were discussing was the comedy lifted us up, and I thought it was very, very nice and very, uh, how do you say, entertaining. And the tragedy bit, well, obviously it sends you down a different road. So where are we going with this? Okay, and that question's probably directed at the writer and maybe the director. Well, I should <laughs> Yeah. So Roy and Michael here. Yeah. Brother. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it would be, well, we're trying to be close to the truth of what happened, so we can't ignore that there was tragedy. We also can't ignore that there were plenty of celebration and dance and people falling in love and falling out of love, all that's in there. And I hope that uh, eventually when we get it finished, the whole production, uh, will be a celebration. But in that celebration, we have to acknowledge that tough things happen. And it will end up with like dancing. <laughs> Everybody dancing. Audience and all. <laughs> all right. Is there one question? Can I, sorry, can I just say, um, first of all, there, are not, those two scenes are not um, consecutive. So it's not the first scene and then this scene. 
Um, this second scene actually appears quite later in the performance. And um, uh, when Roy and I were talking about it, um, up until that point, where um, uh, you know he's, he's singing about uh, the murder of his friend, you know, and um, uh, it's kind of just progressing kind of normally, like there's the whole kind of scene in the 50s with all the music and then the sudden the other, and then the other things start to come into it, the redevelopment and then the sudden the other. But once the murder happens, and Roy talks about it being instead of music, once the murder happens in the performance, it's never the same again. You know what I mean? You can't, uh, we can't just go on singing and dancing our way, like, you know, have a really sad scene and then just carry on. And that's what happened here. You know what I mean? That's what happened here. And it happened all over. You know, that once the murders started happening, it was never the same again. You know, and that's the problem we have today. You know, not to go back to what it used to be like, but how to deal with that, you know. And I think the performance itself, the whole thing is, uh, uh, you know, sort of about that. You know, and we don't, at the moment, do have any resolutions, it, you know, in, in terms of uh, suggesting anything or anything like that. But, um, uh, you know, it, it is, in a way, a celebration of the fountain because, um, you know, the fountain in, is, 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 a, is an area of dairy that is, is a kind of microcosm for everything that happens, you know, and, um, uh, you know, we're once a thriving community to what it is today. So, okay, Martin. So, does that answer the question? It's it's a, obviously a very powerful question that these two men and the actors are going to have to wrestle with. Let's see, Wooly. Um, glad you're here, Wooly Temple from the Fountain. I'm from the Fountain, but I'm a blue one. I was brought up in a different community. Uh, the Fountain story is actually three stories, but they're all intertwined. You have the development of the Fountain after the city walls. The, the origins of the fountain, and uh, you then have the 1920s, and actually starting in the 1900s with the home rule crisis. And the fountain changed on those two times, and then it changed again in the 1970s. So the fountain is actually three stories that are interlinked because the third part was affected by the first part, and in between, if you know what I mean. So, we have three stories, but if you're going to do this one, you'll have to give it a period of time to do the fighting justice. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, sense, William, that from what you've I'm, seen, I'm that, that the not enough justice three has been stories, done? Three distinct stories, yeah. all interlocked, yeah. and which changed the actual uh, infrastructure of the city here, and led to the polarization from the 1900s, the home rule crisis, and the riots of the 20s. <laughs> We had two distinct communities emerging, recognised, Leggy Road, nationalist, fountain unionist. And then the start of that it was a completely mixed area. But then you had the under Nicene War of the Presbyterians and the Episcopalians. And this all was having an effect on what was going to come after. Yeah. So, well, so well, you yeah, had the third I, part. I'm, I'm not trying to be a historian with you. You know what I mean? And if anybody wants to know that, I'll say I send them to you. No, I'm, 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 what I'm saying, Roy, is I would need to be set a period What's on the fight. I can only write about what I know. But there was another interesting thing when you're talking about the Sammy. Sammy Burke came from the dark lane and uh, he didn't grow. And his sister Jenny went on the gardens and she says, I want to order. A wee boy suit for a man. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the 18th we were coming down, we shot the gift celebration, and Sammy was always in front of the procession. So it was torrential rain this 18th, and we were coming down Magazine Street, and the water was all lying at the junction of Magazine Street, and before you went across and from the guilt wall, it was about three or four inches deep. Sammy puts his hands up, he says, it's all right, boys, we crossed the point, but I think I'll get through this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and Jeanette, Jeanette Work, do you want to introduce yourself so people know? Uh, Jeanette Work, I'm a community worker on the fountain. I work at the Cathedral Youth Club. 
And I would just like to congratulate Roy. Uh, that was amazing. And as Emma said, it's very moving, Roy. You find it hard. And I'm sitting here with a lovely lady from Canada. And, and we just said, we just felt the, the warmness and the tenderness coming through. Um, I, I would be interested in uh, maybe if you are continuing to write the next scenes and so forth. What you have portrayed to be there, I think the young people would love to be part of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, now that you're moving on, you know, and the, the young man, as I know, Miss Shane is Henry from Craigan, <laughs> coming back from Canada. <laughs> and, and you did amazing, by the way. I didn't know you could sing either. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> very good, <laughs> And the two ladies are, as usual, fabulous. But Roy, I, I just think that story is so amazing and it just got to me there. And you know, somebody said about bringing um, the, the sad part and, and the, the joyous part together yourself, sir. But I think he needs to do that because we need to recognise, Roy, that that happened. And I mean, there was more than that one murder, as you know, on the fountain and so forth. And, uh, you know, that we, we try to bring the young people along with us for the history. So I just think that you're doing amazing and good luck to you and uh, as I say, we support you all we can. It's good to hear this, um, Jeanette, because one of the things here is there's a wee bit of money to put on what's happened today, but to do this justice, to put on a big show, big pile of money is needed. And in a way, what today is, is almost like a wee consultation. It's a fancy, you know, I don't even like that word, but that feedback is going to be very important. Mm. Well, I have no money in that. But Jeanette, Jeanette, you have feedback and we've got you on camera. <laughs> any other any other thoughts or feelings? Uh, I'm going to br no, if we bring Brona in and then we'll bring I, Alistair I also like from the front. I compliment Seamus. I know him been a fine singer and a fine actor and I couldn't imagine a better person to play Robbie because Seamus had a brother murdered and he's also playing the part of uh, losing a dear friend and the girls were brilliant as well absolutely yeah. I think and the music was just and you made it let it started that it was something special and good luck to uh, everybody in the fountain I'm sure they'll really appreciate when this comes up. And will the rest of you have it? Rona, thank you. Thank you. And you've introduced a fact about Seamus that maybe not everybody was aware of, but certainly we were aware of. So. Uh, Jeanette was aware too. She told her lay there, and the lady sang in South Africa. She must have been the wrong. Ah, she's in. She was dreaming of funding. I said you must have been drunk The lady sung in South Africa. If you never heard them before. That was probably a way we used somewhere. Never heard of them. Cut that out of the camera, please. Keep that in the camera, please. <laughs> Networking to net. Yeah, you want to say something else? I didn't speak out of turn, but I really thought it was important. No, yeah, and. Is that okay, Shane? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I think for me, I know a lot of this is part of the healing and of uh, restoring our humanity. Uh, because, you know, as divided communities, different political backgrounds, we did terrible things to each other over a period of 40 years. And you know, I can connect with what happened to Sammy in the same way that I can connect with what happened to my own brother. So, you know, it was very emotional for me, very difficult, in fact, to do that uh, song. But, uh, you know, I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll just bring Alistair in and then James. Yeah, Alistair, you wanted to say. Can I just say that this, to me, that today is a taster of what should happen to the, the, the drama or whatever they want to do. Uh, there's a lot of people here today that uh, I would say would be very interested to hear the whole story of the film. And you've got to get the whole story to appreciate what, is, uh, what has happened and what we hope will happen in the future. Uh, just while Seamus was singing that song. Uh, the second in the second song? The second the second one. Uh, the person that was shot I was talking to him fifteen minutes beforehand. And uh, 
Conscious, given you know, I see you as emotional now. Mm -hmm. I'm emotional. Um, I'm emotional as well. So we need to look after each other. Uh, those of us who are emotional, after this is over, we can't just. If people feel they need to stay around and talk away, and I'm sure there's more tea and coffee, and people will be here to listen. Yeah. So thank you, Oster, again. Oster and I go back a long way. <laughs> A long way. I once had got a photograph of Alice. The bus had broken down that we were travelling on. <laughs> Alistair was driving it, and he was under the bus. Yeah. And I got a photograph. And the just photograph across the border. The whole just across the border, and the caption oh, of the photograph was, "What have the Pope and Alistair Simpson got in common?" <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is, they both kissed the tarmac when they arrived in the Republic of Ireland. <laughs> so subsequently, Alistair. When Royal Bottles Paradiso was being filmed, he enforced me to kiss the ground of the mem, and he filmed me. But it didn't make it didn't make the cut. So Unfor we, unfortunately. Yeah, and in a sense, of humour is the balance. Yeah, yeah. James, you wanted to speak. Uh, Do you want my, to introduce yourself? My to name's you? James Greer, and uh, <clears throat> I'm a community layabout. <laughs> uh, I spent a lot of time in fighting as a child. My aunt, come granny, lived in 10 Kennedy Street. And I was just sharing where our Brazil, Brazil? Portuguese. Portuguese friends here, you know, that the, the, the barrier across Kennedy Street and the Kennedy Place. And always looking, trying to climb up and look over that wall through the rails and wonder and ask my aunt what what goes on down there? She says, all oh, those bad people live down there, you know. And all those memories come flooding back because of that one shot up Wapping Lane there. You know, I was touched on a lot of levels. You know, nostalgically, I, I was in tears on, on two levels, you know. One was the breakup of the fountain and the way that the, the fountain people were in Derry, I think, are very unique people. And I don't think anybody that, that once lived there may have complained about the terrible conditions they loved and outside toilets, poor living conditions, narrow streets and all the rest of it until it was taken away. And then when everybody looked back they said, oh, w wish we could have the fountain back the way it was, you know. And from my wee heart, you know, going up there and, and walking around as a child in the fountain the way it used to be and it looked like it was, it looked like a town to me. You know, I was only maybe six, seven, eight years old and it was like a city. And I used to walk around it, wide-eyed, go under the barbers and watch them sharpening the, sharpening the blades on the leather strap. And it was just unbelievable, you know. On the level of, of, of the death, you know, it, it just it, it really reached inside me deeply, you know, to see that, you know, that a thousand people attending a funeral. We, we did that all too often. You know, it happened too often in this city, in this country, where we've been deeply, in every community, felt the pain, regardless of what community you were, 
you felt the pain of the loss of a friend or loved one in exactly the same way. And I think maybe now, you know, all these years later, we're starting to come around to the fact that we can recognise that in each other. Furthermore, the, the, the decimation of the fountain by the city planners in the 1970s, you know, was, was just a tack on to what happened on the bog side at the same time. And I'm sure, and I don't know much about it, but I'm sure the people who lived in those wee streets, and my granny, who was one of them, lived in around the Long Tower area, and who was actually a Roman Catholic, and I'm a loyalist, was from the Long Tower area, and I can remember all those wee streets. And I just wonder, do the people who lived in those communities and their, their neighbours were like their families, feel the same way. And just one other comment, you know, on the, on the, 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 the rise and fall, or, or the, 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 highs, the highs and the lows of the community. I think that's life. You know, we can't, we can't focus on, on the, the sadness, and we can't focus on the happiness, because every day, every one of us, is up there and down there. So it's life. That roller coaster ride, Roy, that you're portraying, is life. It may have been life in the fountain in that period, but it's like, to, the, to this very day, it, it represents humanity and life. So well done. The only thing I would quibble about in what you Well, said, you're always quibbling, I mean. <laughs> is you're not a, you're a man with a big heart. Not a wee heart. <laughs> no, and I mean that. That's well, not thanks, just, thank you very much. Yeah. Any other, uh, Mark? Uh, my name is Mark Brown. Um, um, thank Roy for his uh, initiative and creation because I think it will inspire other people to do the same in generations to come. Um, I think it's very creative. One of the things about creating a, a book, a movie, a program, radio program, or whatever, is that your audience identifies. They see themselves in that position, they see themselves in that memory span, and uh, they get involved with the character, or they get involved with the story, or, or the end, or the beginning, or the middle, or whatever it is. And that's how you describe a good book, or a good film, or whatever. And and from what other people have been saying and what I'm saying now is that I identify that. Uh, and, uh, uh, lots of different things. Time changing, coming back from different places to here and uh, seeing how time has changed and how things have um, sometimes got better but taken three steps back. Um, how once things were there, but they're no longer there. Um, all of that you can identify. The audience can identify with you. Uh, and then, then we come to the emotion. Some people may say you want more emotion, more drama, and all the rest of it, deeper, and, and, and so on and so forth. I think it's all there. It, it invokes the memory. But it invokes the memory of people who lived within that trouble zone and what they call them. For me, the memory of a, a friend of mine called Inspector Norman Dully, who was shot outside uh, Strand Road Church. Presbyterian Church, yeah. Uh, on a Sunday, it just brought the family out. That, that brought it all back to me, and that made it very deep inside me uh, to that point. But, your creation is, is all part of that. It's, it's about drama, it's about memory, and if you can invoke that in people, then that makes a good creation. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Mark. Well, one of the things I notice here, Mark, which I've not really seen before, and maybe it's because we're set out like a theatre, is as people have spoken, everyone has clapped you know, after each speaker. And that speaks of a great respect, a great noticing of the speaker, a regard for the speaker. And the, so I appreciate that. I'm sure Roy and Michael are picking that up as well, that this piece of drama of two short scenes has done something to the whole lot of us in this room. And it's also people like myself, who's from Craigan as well, Kate Nash, would, uh, you know, it, it relates to me. As you said, you were the very first person to speak. 
So it relates not only to the fighting community, the Protestant Union's loyalist community, but to all of us, which I think is the great power of this, the humanity of this story. Uh, Patty, you wanted to come in. I have a born out question about just production values. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we move on? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it's important in order to get the story across. Uh, there's nothing I love more than a good musical, right? But I know <laughs> that thing you see a few, you can see that the production value of the backing track, and the ba it's usually spoils it for me. And I know, and I, w I wasn't, uh, I love the song, right? I wasn't taking with that boo 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 stuff at the. <laughs> that backing track you played on your guitar. Can you make your own musical then? <laughs> <laughs> Yards and so on. Um, I have to say, I would put this on a par with it, the way in which it tells the story and the history. But whilst it's about the point, and I hope the whole community will take ownership of it, because uh, we are often seen as two communities, but there's an awful lot of common experiences within those communities, and uh, quite often we have more to unite us than we have to divide us. And I hope that that's a message that we come out of this music. Originally, Foyle Road, but my family, my grandfather and uncle was still on all that in the fountain, so I spent a lot of time there getting up there. Big connection, nothing was. <laughs> 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 so Michael, yeah, so Michael Mangan, who's directed this, say that um, the way it's set out now is um, <coughs> sort of basically how the <coughs> we, we we had planned to do the whole performance, but on a bigger scale, obviously, but um, in a hall because we um, thought it was important. Um, this area here was we, we we were looking at it as the streets um, between the people, so it started to sort of take on all sorts of significances. You know, like people one side, people the other, a kind of street divide. You know, and this but also bringing them together. You know, and that one area sort of at the top was going to be the main hall because um, in, in the fifties and early sixties, the dances there on Saturday night and things like that were. People from all over the community came to it. It wasn't just uh, the people in the farm. And um, so, it, it, just in what you were saying about the whole community taking ownership, we kind of designed it so that um, 
uh, when you come to see it, um, you will be. You know, if you, if you be in this position where um, you're facing the audience, you know, you're facing each other. So I think that's important. And we, we, Roy and I thought that was important in terms of development. Thank you, Michael. And Roy, do you want to almost as we're have the last word, or maybe some of the actors want to finish? Wish to say something. I just, just in terms of theatre, I mean, Devlin down there was talking earlier, I just think that this will connect with young people as well because of the kind of medium that it's using. And I think, um, I've read a few other scenes that Roy's written in the music as well. And I think um, the great thing about theatre is it doesn't have to answer any questions, but it can, it can get people interested in, um, in whatever it's about. So I think if people come and see human stories, and are entertained or you know are saddened together, that's a great thing. But they might leave also, you know, wanting to know more. And it's a it's an important thing to kind of I suppose to acknowledge as well that people then can go off and find out maybe more about the front and if they're not from a you know, if they're from another community or um, <coughs> maybe just start looking at a at the place. In a, in a different light as well and, and seeing human stories rather than you know, specifically religious or political or anything like that. So I just want to say well done to Roy as well. Um, I just want to say thank you for the offer to be part of it um, for these two series. Um, and I must have said yes on the day when my head was in the right place. Because it's got closer to the day, I think I don't know what am I doing. But anyway, but you know what has been really interesting for me is in the busyness of, and lots of people in this room are incredibly busy, and sometimes in our busyness, sometimes in my busyness, I forget to stop and remind myself about what, what the work I'm actually involved in is all about. And there was something about, like, it, was a, a, it took me back to a time as well, and I thought, you know, even though my intellectually I know the work needs done, I can't, and in my heart to some extent I know the work needs done, it really reinforced that for me again about the importance of of telling the stories. And I love musical theatre anyway. I think it's a great medium for telling stories. And the idea, Martin, to your question about you know, is it is it a comedy or is it a whatever? And it's just that in the back of James Bond's life, and and that's how you know. I think it's all of those things. So, I mean, it's. I mean, I know you're delighted with the reaction here today, and uh, we're delighted for you because whatever. But well done, good luck with it. Thank you. Um, Diane Rear, in case you don't know, and Nikki Harley, in case you don't know. Uh, for me, I think it's a great opportunity uh, to tell the story of the fountain and uh, to address some of the. Problems that have grown up, not just uh, as a consequence of the troubles, but you know, through the division of people and the you way know, people were uh, cloistered in the one wee spot, uh, put this back almost to the rest of the city. Uh, and I think this might be an opportune time for us to begin to examine that and look at how we can reintegrate uh, the fountain, uh, the Protestant community generally, the waterside included, uh, back into the life of the city. But I think it's really important that we stop <coughs> regarding ourselves as two people who need to look to a day when we can be just one people, yeah, one yeah. city. Here, here. Here, here. Yeah. And Gordon Buckle, as you can tell, is going to grace us with a song to finish up. Thank you so much for being here. Sunset record player in the winter zone, people Javen, Little Huey, Little Richard, rock and roll. You want Javers up here? Yes. There's <laughs> a few Javers here, bro. Where's bro? Singers as well. The chorus is.
upon fountains to read. 